Hi everyone, I'm Laurencio and in this video I'm going to talk about Armored Cores. Ok, not this Armored Cores, but this one. Armored Core 2 is amazing, but it's not for everyone. Until you get to feel awesome and see how incredible the game is, you'll have to do a lot of trial and error. You start the story with a weaker mech, also the combat might feel stiff and slow at first. But once you get used to it and upgrade your mech, you start kicking ass and feeling awesome in the game's 30 missions. Aside of the combat, you get the most praiseworthy element, the customization, which is crazy level deep. By playing missions and beating opponents in the game's arena, you earn credits, with which you can buy new parts. There are 15 categories you can upgrade. Head, torso, arms, legs, generator, FCF's targeting, booster, back weapon left, back weapon right, arm weapon left, arm weapon right, radiator cooling system, inside options, extension system, and optional parts. There are hundreds of customization options, and the customization goes so deep that not only that you can fine tune stats, but each bolt and flap you upgrade can be seen during gameplay. The level of detail is crazy. And after you have a strong mech, the combat becomes amazing. You kick ass and have fun. Also you can go against 50 CPU opponents in the game's arena. You can also go toe to toe against a friend in split screen multiplayer and battle in the game's 8 maps. The game is awesome once you get into it. But when you first pick it up, you might feel that it's slow, so if you're interested in the game, you'll have to give it time. Armor Core 2 Another Age is the direct sequel of Armor Core 2. It continues the story. Gameplay wise, the arena has been removed to make room for over a hundred missions. Also the game has local co-op multiplayer. And the Japanese version had online multiplayer. The other versions don't have it, since the network adapter hasn't been released outside of Japan at that time. Armor Core 3 has a new story. The core gameplay is roughly the same, which is what made this title less impressive. The graphics are the same as in previous titles, and it's true that the graphics in Armor Core 2 were great, but they were great for the time they were released. Some say that the graphics in Armor Core 3 look dated. Also critics didn't like that the game hasn't brought any significant improvements, and that the game doesn't have online multiplayer. And I disagree with the critics in the first part. Just because it doesn't have anything new and wow, doesn't mean that the game isn't as great. I've learned it in the tough way that novelties don't always make a game better. I've seen games that had the perfectly balanced formula and just because critics said that it's repetitive, they made an abomination that doesn't feel cohesive. What I want to say is that for me, the game is still great. It still has that ton of customization options and the same epic battles. And I got a new story to give more context to it and to, to use the great mechanics again. For me the game is good. Silent Line Armor Core has a new story. I looked it up on Wikipedia and it seems that the novelties are the addition of player trained computer controlled versions of the player's armor core and the first person view. In rest, the gameplay elements are the same and critics complained again. But fans loved it. That's how Metacritic has this big discrepancy between the meta score and the user score. Armor Core Nexus has better AI, but also more difficult gameplay. Many complained about the steep learning curve. And as I said in the first review of Armor Core 2 in this video, watch out that the first hours you play, the game will most probably be difficult. But once you get the hang of it and customize your mech, you're all good. The more difficult gameplay than in the other games shouldn't be that much of an obstacle. Also compared to other games, the missions are more complex and require more strategy than in previous games. You have to take care of the radars on the screen as they are going to be useful in detecting enemies. Also enemies are smarter and need a certain strategy to take them down. The whole gameplay has become more complex, and if we are at complex, you get more customization options. There are 400 interchangeable parts and weapons, double than in the previous games. 
The first disc titled Evolution contains the 100 missions. Disc 2, entitled Revolution, contains 40 missions taken from the previous installments and the Armor Core series that have been made over to take advantage of the new game's graphic engine and robot design interface. It also contains movies, concept arts and more collector's edition stuff. The game is great, it managed to please fans, critics and newcomers alike. Armor Core Ninebreaker is in my opinion disappointing. The game has no story, it's just a bunch of training missions. Sure you can play the game for months, that's how much replay value it has, but still, Without a story, the game feels like it doesn't want to go anywhere, it feels like it doesn't have a purpose. At least if it had online multiplayer you could justify the lack of a story, but it doesn't even have that. Armor Core Formula Front is a game developed for the PSP. Later the game was ported to the PS2, that's why it received such low reviews. Compared to Nexus, the PSP version is too basic. Controls aren't as good, graphics aren't either, and the AI isn't as smart. But the game is still good. It's more impressive when you play it on a PSP than on the PS2, but even on the PS2, if you've played the other ones, you'll most probably like this one too. It's not a bad game, it's just that compared to Nexus, you can see that the game is inferior. But if you're into Mac games and like this series, this one is good too but it'll feel more basic than the other ones. So I recommend you to play it on a PSP, but at least there's something at which this game excels at. It has 480 parts, more than Nexus. Also the game was released only in Japan, and if you want to control the robot yourself, you have to tweak the settings, as normally when you boot up the game, the game will play itself, I mean you can customize your own robot, but you can't play with it, the AI controls it. But there is a setting in the game's settings with which you can control the robot yourself. Armor Core Last Raven concludes the story told in Armor Core 3. Aside of the different story and thus different missions, the gameplay has remained the same as in Nexus. The game is still awesome if you've played the other ones. Overall, the Armor Core series awaits you with some amazing moments. Problem is, the games aren't for everyone. You need a lot of trial and error until you get used to the games, but once you do so, you'll fall in love with the gigantic amount of customization options and the details each bolt and flap on your customized core has. Also the battles get tense and epic, if you give the game time. Ok so this was the video, if you liked it please hit the like button and subscribe, if you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section, you would help me a lot. If you want you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord, and if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.